Hi right, guys, Hatch back again today. Hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. The streaming of Call of Duty scrims and practice so far this season may well be coming to an end very shortly indeed, but we still got to see a lot of Optic Texas versus Team at Temp matchups going down last night. Towards the end of this scrim set, there was a quite remarkable scoreboard on Karachi Hardpoint, which maybe indicated what Optic are going to plan to do going forward. A big question of the last few days has been how will Pred and Shotzi work together? They may have figured out a strategy now to make that work with Pred soaking all of the hill time. At least on this particular map. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. First of all, I thought this is pretty funny. Finally, a victory here for Shotzi and BPL. If you guys don't know about BPL, it's basically eights, but um, you know, it's like face it, right? Face it, uh, rank S, or whatever it used to be called. In the Counter-Strike side, that's kind of what we've got set up here in the Call of Duty side as well. The pros have been all over this over the last few days, which is great to see. If you win a game, you get 25 ELO points. If you lose, you lose 18. So um, it's beneficial to play more, because obviously you want to encourage people to play, but you've still got to win to make that happen. Shotzi, I believe, started off 0-7 here, and was was not having a good time in his first several series that he plays, but um, eventually he actually started cooking and he won his first one last night and then he immediately won another one after that by playing well. So maybe the curse has been broken and Shotzi's now going to go on an absolute tear and it's definitely not over yet by any means. If I just hit the refresh here real quick, we can see that Vivid is now number one. Draza is still on the grind. He's played 27 maps. I mean, it's actually insane how many, like if I just order this, Slash has played 17, Draza's on 27. So yeah, he's absolutely cooking right now but um that doesn't necessarily mean he's gonna win because everyone's draws has had a tiger on his back let's put it that way people want to take him down really badly because they don't want him to win now the more you play the more likely it is you'll be at the top of the leaderboard because you get more you know mmr for a win than a loss but it doesn't guarantee anything and especially when there are win streak bonuses so Linz has won his first five series in a row and um that means that every i think after two wins every Every series you win, you go from 25 points to 26 to 27 to 28. So there's some win streak bonus. And I think that's why we saw the decimals yesterday, because in order to make the win streak bonus work, there's some multiplier and it means that you get some sort of decimal points that arrive here. But it does open the door. So right now it's Vivid number one, then Awakening, who had a pretty big win streak bonus, I think at some point, then Linz. Drazu is still fourth because he's just played a lot, even though he's only, you know, 14 and 13 right now. Kismet's already 4 and 0. And um, then if we find Shotzi here. Okay, Shotzi just overtook Parasite with two and seven, but he's on a two win streak. So if Shotzi goes on like a seven win streak, then he will definitely climb back up the ladder here. So still kind of early days. It's only been around a few days and it's a good couple of weeks until we figure out who's going to win it. Your money's still got to be on Draza because he's probably going to put in the most time, but they're certainly not letting him have it all his own way at the moment. So let's talk about the practice that's been going on. Claire actually confirmed that yesterday was their final day they're going to be streaming practice, which is somewhat early than I'd like it to be. We're only like a week and a half in. I kind of hope we'd get at least like two weeks, three weeks of pro streams. Depends though, because, you know, some teams turn them off quite early on. And then you know, teams like Temp, for example, Temp's team, they might well continue streaming for some time. I don't really know what Temp's plan is, but, you know, he's not making any money in challenges, right? I guess they're not signed to a team. So it makes sense for them to stream their practice, to be honest, in the circumstances. So I imagine that'll probably continue for quite some time to come. But uh, Clay's been looking good to me. This is a clip here with his MCW and lots of practice going down the last few days, playing Boston, playing Rocker. Of course, we know they play a fair bit of Toronto as well, which is always a good time with a Clay scrappy rivalry that we presently have in the game. But just to look at some results here, Clay versus what, Clay and Carolina versus Boston. Boston, a very interesting team to see how they'll fare, because as I've said before, they're a team that I wouldn't expect to be great at the start of the season relative to how good I think they can be and I think they'll be better in Search and Destroy than in um, than in Respawn to be honest and in Harpoon in general but they did win you know they played the four maps here or at least the four that we see in uh, Ronnie's tweet here they won three of them Rocker also won three maps off Carolina as well so they won the invasion very close invasion Karachi went Carolina's way Skid Row was the other way and then Subbase was an absolute gruel I mean there's so many Subbase maps like this we uh, to be honest Subbase might not be the best and I know the spawns are dodgy and I wasn't expecting Subbase to be a comp map really when this game launched. I thought it was like maybe sixth or seventh preference, to be honest. But I'm convinced we're going to have some like banger results here on Subbase this year. Like 
There's so much potential for these maps to go right down to the wire. And I think we're going to have a good time. Clay drops 39. There's also the potential as well to drop big numbers here. Like, okay, there's a respawn delay, but even then, dropping 50 plus is possible on sub base. He also comes back, Clay, at Scrap as well. And I don't know, there was this tweet about the Silver Surfer. And Clay obviously was acting Scrappy because that was his insult to say, look, every time I've been to a COD Champs Grand Final, I've walked home with the ring. And, uh, you know, Scrap was there saying, oh, well, Clay, you only won that online champs or whatever it was. And, well, okay, Clay did win two other rings than that as well. Sure, he won the online champs with Dallas Empire back in 2020 with the Modern Warfare 29 season on Dallas Empire. But that was, I think, the biggest ever prize pool for a world champs. Like, Clay took him 300k for that champs win. Like, kind of insane. And after taxes, it was like 197. I think he posted a screenshot of him going into his bank account, actually, at that time. So, you know, the money still at the bank account, you know, which is maybe a response he could have had to scrap. But let's talk about the Optic series against Temp. They've been playing this team a lot lately. And to be fair, Temp's team is going to be seriously good in large part because they're playing like all the top teams. Temper scrimming face, they're scrimming, you know, optic, they're scrimming all the top teams. So, um, you know, they are, as far as I'm concerned, like they would be pro league level at the moment, at least in half points, we don't really know elsewhere. And um, but to be fair, their search and destroy should be pretty good as well. Now on paper, you're going to say, oh, well, Pred and Shotzi, they really need to be Cook and TJ and Prolude, which is a fair enough analysis. But I still think Team Temp, um, you know, have been practicing for some time. They get all the best practice right now. So um, I think they're going to be good. And they are definitely a very solid team. And they were doing a very impressive job against Optic last night. So they played two sets of the half points here. First map went to Optics Way, 251.71. We saw that crazy comeback we saw yesterday. Another sub base banger. I mean, here we are on sub base, you know, 174, 172. If you guys aren't familiar with the way the game plays at the moment and are unsure why these games keep going to time rather than to 250, it's basically because sub base, the way the hills are designed, it's very easy to either contest or it's just so difficult to even get any time. Like the hill that's on top of the submarine is just getting any seconds on that is usually, I would say like in the games that I've played on it, like 30 of the 60 seconds, there's just nobody on the hill because it's so hard to even get on the thing in the first place then to get the time. So the clock just ticks down. And if you get to 250, you've done well, to be honest, because that's usually, this game is always kind of crazy on sub base, but I kind of enjoy that. Skid Row was um, very impressive from the, the temp guys. Invasion was very competitive. And, uh, you know, for example, one map here on the skid row where 250-145, Kenny had 17, everyone else had 13, was, um yeah, Sparta had two and a half minutes in the half point. So really what I'm looking at a lot of the time is how Optic is setting up their team. How are they making this work with those four players? Because the amount of talent is insane. They've got Karma over there, of course, as the coach. They've got JP. They've got Kenny now as well, who's going to do, I think, a great job for this team as well. So there's lots of reasons why this team should be looking very good this season. And there's no excuses for them not to deliver. And as I said yesterday, I think them struggling a little bit early on can be a positive for them, to be honest. Because, you know, let's say Optic were dominating everyone right now. People would be saying, oh, well, you know, just online. You know what I mean? So you can't really win. But I definitely think they've been maybe struggling somewhat more than people expected. Maybe people thought, all right, three, four days into scrims, they should be cooking now, which, okay, I think they're improving, but um, they're not exactly dominating. I mean, they got beat 250-133 here on the invasion. And yeah, brilliant shots, 13 kills each, not having the best time in general. Pro loot drops 32 on the other side. So still a lot to learn, a lot to improve on, I think, here in Pred shots, especially have to figure out exactly what is going on. But they may have come closer to doing so towards the end of this series. So they played another set of rotations, like the Terminal 25178 at that time, Team Temp one. Sub base this time was again at 162, 144. Pro Loop drops 41 on this map for the loss, though, actually. Skid Row was um, a victory this time for Optic side. Invasion, then Team Temp won that again. But the final map of the series, they played Karachi. And this was this scoreboard is kind of ridiculous. 25135 in Optic's favor. So the maps overall were pretty much split, to be honest. But have a look at this, right? Especially the optic um, scoreboard. So Pred has 15 kills, 15 in 14, with three minutes, one second in the half point. And I mentioned this yesterday that it's possible to get this amount of hill time as an SMG. Hixie was doing it. He went like 14 in 10 the other day with three minutes in hill in the European Challenger side. But it's possible to do. And this has been the question who's going to play the hill time? Who's going to run around? Typically, the last couple of years, Prid and Shotzi have both been the runaround players. And you might think, all right, let's put Kenny in the hill or let's put Dashi in the hill or something like that. But in this game, it might not make the most sense, especially on Karachi. 
a lot of your a lot of the time you want your SMGs in the points really because the type of gunfights they get are close range fights. So it's generally favoured on Karachi to try and put your SMG in the hill and have your ALs playing somewhere else. That's at least how I see it. You guys might disagree. But um, on this occasion, Prill had three minutes and a half points and Shotzi was just running around as was pretty much Kenny and then Dashi had 50 seconds as well. So um, and Dashi had eight kills. Like it's such, it's such a ridiculous scoreboard. Kenny has three seconds. Dashi has eight kills, 13 deaths. They won by a mile and Pred has three minutes in the half point. So kind of a ridiculous scoreboard, but is this the potential optic solution, right? Do they on many maps need to consider, okay, maybe let's put Pred in the hill because, you know, maybe they were thinking let's put shots in the hill and have Pred run around, which can work, but, you know, maybe this works even better because you kind of want to decide what's going on there. If you don't have a set structure, I think it's going to be more challenging to just kind of wing it. Now, obviously, this isn't going to happen every game and some games, the way the cards are going to fall, the way the trades are happening, Shotzi is going to have more time than Pred. But if the general philosophy is... Pred sit in the heart point, Shotzi run around and push out the cuts. Maybe that's the way to play it. So just before we close out here, I wanted to mention is the flank come up with their official pre-season CDL power rankings. This is what they came up with. So this is determined in part by recent scrim results, but also in part by how good the teams should really be on paper anyway. So it's not just scrims, but scrims are somewhat relevant in this analysis. FaZe have been looking really good. Toronto, they get all the way up here and they've been looking good in scrims and what we have seen so far on paper, they look really good as well. So uh, yeah, apparently that's enough for S tier. New York A tier, Optic just behind them. So yeah, on current evidence, Optic fourth best team. I can see that. I can understand that. Thieves then number five in the B tier. Carolina up here with Boston. I generally agree with this analysis a little bit. I think that Carolina should be pretty good at the start of the season. I'm not sure how it's going to trend. Hopefully it trends well. I'm looking, hopefully they could do quite well this season. But, um, you know, I don't mind this list, actually. I think it's okay in all things considered. Not convinced by Surge. Not convinced by Vegas. Rooker, I think, have been somewhat better than I thought they'd be. So, yeah, probably that's fair enough. Heretics haven't massively impressed me, but they did make the roster change. And then Gorillas, well, we're not really expecting that much from that organization, let's be honest, this season. But at least they've put together an interesting team that goes against the grain of what they've typically done over the last couple of seasons, which is just waste money and throw away chances. But very much intrigued to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care. And I'll see you next time. That's not both. Both jumped sure. up on me. Oh. Pissed on. Nice. Who the f are you challenging, Embos? You're so bad. You're Anything actually wet. dog shit. You're terrible. Please come out and chow. <laughs> Get his ass. Look at you. No, no, statue. No, 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 no. He's my homie. We were hanging out last weekend, just so y'all know. Not anymore. <laughs> you know, he never goes and never hang out again. <laughs> we're never. <laughs> I don't even know why.